Hi everyone, my name is Malky and welcome to Bite Size Temporary Works. In today's episode, we're going to look at the design of suspended access platforms. Bite Size Temporary Works' aim is to produce learning videos for the design and management of temporary works. So the aim of these videos are to provide you tips, uh, best practice for the design of your temporary works um, and you should always seek the advice of a competent engineer. So now I'm going to talk to you about platform design codes. So there are a number of codes that you can refer to, but BS5974 is the main code that you should be looking at for the design of access platforms or suspended platforms or bridges. That doesn't really have any loading information in it, uh, but it does reference a different code called BSEN1808 for loading, and I'll speak about that in a minute. You also have BS5973, which is more applicable to access scaffolds, and what that does is it provides you blanket UDLs of light, light duty, heavy duty, medium duty, access UDLs that you're going to need on the bridge. And I'll explain why blanket UDLs are a bad thing in the next couple of slides. BSEN 1808 allows you to apply patch loads based on the safe working load or rated load that you're going to put on the bridge. And I'm going to talk about the benefits of that now in the coming slides. So we're talking about a patch load. What is a patch load? A patch load is a concentrated load applied in the most onerous locations on the platform to give you a safe design. So what we're doing here is we're taking the max load that will be on the platform in reality. So if we're looking at a small painting project, it could be two men, tools and equipment. So it wouldn't be any more than four to 500 kgs actually on the platform. And is the approach of applying a blanket UDL the best way forward in this? It probably isn't. So what we do when we're designing to patch loads is we take that patch load and you can see in these images here on the top, we're putting the patch load in the mid span of a platform. These stars represent the cables or the support points. We're going to apply that at the mid span. Then we're going to go along and apply it at the edge and we're going to apply it at the support. So when we apply that load at the mid span, we're going to get the worst case bending in the platform. When we apply that load at the support, we're going to get the worst case reaction. And how do patch loads work? You take uh, your platform rating and you divide that over an area at an intensity of two kilonewtons per meter squared. So you would take whatever your, your rated load is uh, divided by two kilonewtons per meter squared and that gives you the plan area you need to apply that patch load over. And it's quite a simple system to use. So on the bottom, we're gonna look at the reaction comparison between a patch load scenario and a blanket UDL scenario. So we're going to take an example that you have a 10 by 10 meter platform and we're going to apply one kilonewton per meter squared of a blanket UDL on this area. So that's 100 meter squared times one is 100 kilonewtons or 10 tons. So on a blanket load scenario where you have a platform that will only have a max of 500 kgs on it, we will apply 10 tons to that platform and we apply at least 2,500 kgs of a light load reaction to each support point, as you can see in the image in the bottom. But if we were to go down the patch load route, we would only be applying a live load reaction of 500 kgs max at any one support. So there's massive benefits there. So I've worked on projects before where people have insisted, whether it's the client or the checking engineer on a blanket UDL scenario, rather than a patch load. And on these projects, they've had to reinforce and strengthen the gantry beams that are on the underside of the bridge to take this load. And this load isn't the real load, it's a phantom load or phantom reaction as I would call it. Um, and it is significantly more than the platform or the bridge is ever gonna see. And when you've got structures that you're trying to repair that are in a weakened state, then let's, let's not try and overload them. It's, it's, it's not the way to do things. So now I'm going to talk to you about bridge accidents. It's something that we need to discuss within the industry and we need to learn from the issues that happened to these in the past. One of the major ones that happened in 1999 was the Avonmount Bridge Gantry Collapse. And this is a bridge on the M5. So what happened here was that uh, runway beams were installed on the underside of the bridge and the platform in question was hanging from cables on this runway beam. And it was being used by operatives to change washers in the runway beam that hadn't been installed. So what happened on this was safety devices that were put in place to protect the operatives were ignored and overwritten. And the platform got caught on a gust of wind and it blew 
the platform forward and the trolleys that were connected to the gantry beams just ran off the end of the gantry beams. The end of this platform dropped and the four people who were on this platform fell to their death. Uh, it was a tragic, tragic accident and one that could have been avoided. Uh, after the platform tilted over and the operatives fell, um, the surface area became a sail in the wind and then that platform, which was at mid-span of the bridge, got blown all the way to the pier at the end and it crashed into the scaffold that you can see in this uh, image. After this accident, the HSE introduced stricter legislation on platform design and we're going to talk about that in a bit of detail going forward. So now we're going to talk about redundancy. And redundancy in platform design has always been there, but it's been more emphasis on it since these disasters that have happened to people have passed away. So the outcome of the HSE review was that uh, factors of safety on platform design were not sufficient. You know, it wasn't the way to do it going forward. On a permanent works design, uh, if you're designing something, a uh, factor safety of two, four, six, eight, you'll probably take a, a, a scenario that that is sufficient, it'll never happen, it'll never fail. But having a massive factor safety approach was not the way forward. You needed to make sure that there was structural duplication of all elements throughout the access platform in case any one me member failed. So if you're familiar in permanent works design with uh, progressive collapse, um, it's similar to that. You need to make sure that there's a, an alternative load path or route to support the platform so that the operators can get it off it safely in the a case of a, an accident. So the image we're going to see here on the bottom is that we've got a platform here with six stars in it, which represent the support points of the platform. So we do an analysis on that and we find out the support point or reaction point that has the highest reaction on it. And then what we do in the analysis is we take that out and we see how the platform reacts to that. Do you get uplift in the opposite corner? Um, ideally, that's not what you want. Um, and if you do get uplift, you need to put measures in place to deal with that uplift. But it's a, a scenario where we can still get these people or operatives off the platform in a safe manner. If you had a platform with four supports only on it and one of them failed, then there's a chance that this platform will rotate and tip. So if you have something that has three or four supports on it, then you have to duplicate the supports, as in you have to double up on the cables. You have a primary and a secondary cable with a safety system on the secondary cable that stops the platform from falling if the primary system fails. So thank you very much for looking at my presentation. Uh, I'm just going to do a summary of it. So we've looked at a lot of safety improvements that have been made over the years that have helped the death rate and reduced the number of accidents. We see that the design approach is critical when you're talking about redundancy and causing yourself problems with dealing with reactions that don't exist. The system choice is a, a massive balance. The balance between your strength, weight, price, procurement, bridge condition, it is a challenge, but every project has a solution and you need to incorporate redundancy throughout. Redundancy is key in all uh, suspended access and you need to ensure it is in place at all times. So I'd like to thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you liked it. And if you want to watch more, follow our social media channels and our YouTube channel for more presentations. Thanks for watching and goodbye.